Hello and welcome to my uh, Tuesday night live painting demo. Uh, I see that there's a couple of you um, out there already. Um, yeah, there it is. And um, if you if you can, please let me know where you're um, you're watching from and uh, and introduce yourself if if you're not um, too shy. If if you are, that's fine. You're welcome to just watch and. Um, and if anyone wants to draw or paint along, you're welcome to, and um, I, and I um, will get going. Um, this is a photograph of a, a young girl named Callie. She was part of the selection process that I do on my Instagram channel, my followers vote, and um, over, I'm sorry for the rattling, um, over 400 people voted um, and selected her actually as a second choice. I painted the first choice um, of last week of a young girl in a sundress with a big, um, with very big hair and, uh, very cute. And, um, and so Callie also very cute and she has this nice, um, stripe jumper on. And so that's going to be part of the challenge is getting some of the bright colors of, of that in there. I usually on Instagram, I start by doing a pencil drawing just so they, um, so that I can leave the painting for um, the YouTube, but I kind of felt like that wasn't really a natural way for me to work. I really do um, net more naturally draw with the paint, and so I was struggling with the pencil. And um, so that's why um, there's a little bit of um, underpainting here that I, uh, that I got started just to sort of get in uh, some of the lay-in as I go, and that's um, where I'm gonna start um, here tonight. And so this actually gives me a little bit of a head start too, because I kind of feel like with the pencil drawing, I really have to cover over everything um, that was laid down before I can start to get the sense of the the paint. And here I can uh, I can sort of paint as I draw, and that really um, helps me in that regard. So as I'm painting, I really need to start um, thinking about the structure of the anatomy of the face. There is the top of the cheek here and that um, swings around. So I just want to be sensitive to that as I'm as I'm trying to replicate some of the colors and the shapes in the photograph itself. I have to remember that those shapes actually are um, conveying the are, are representative of the anatomy in her face and the light that's hitting her. And unless I'm paying attention to those things, then all those shapes together won't really um, won't really work because I won't be um, imbuing them with the information of of the, her facial expression and the anatomy in her face and how things are moving forward um, and back in space. Um, to get her ear to sit back, I really need to mix a little bit, get it a little bit grayer kind of a warm gray back there, something like this. Um, I know that looks off if you look that color compared to the photograph, and I may need to go a little bit lighter on that front edge, but once I surround that with the darker shadows of her hair, then that color then starts to look right. One also thing of interest is I like the way her hair swooping around. It's very Art Nouveau, this kind of swoop and curl at the end with these other ribbons of hair. And so I want to make those as graphic as I can and really give them a sense of um, shape and dimension as I'm painting it. And where it crosses her face, I really need to get the face in place first and really be brave and come, come over that with the brush strokes. Okay, so I will continue with this and try to get it moving along a little bit um, more quickly. Um, essentially, what I partly what I want to do is correct um, some of the um, initial lines of the painting that I put down that I don't feel like we're in the right place. And you get fairly gray in the background here. I can. I can mimic what's in the photo, or I can be get very inventive with the 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 light and the color that's in the background. 
and um, one thing that also um, I put in the eyes rather quickly but they really don't um, quite feel right yet so I want to go ahead and see if I can adjust those I want her eyes this part of the face to be really the focal point and to do that I need to get a fair amount of accuracy in the the values and the and the drawing and if I do that successfully then um, it will have something that I kind of like in, in paintings where there's areas of the painting that are very rough and um, painterly gestural and then um, then there'll be parts of the painting that will feel very uh, realistic or photographic or however you want to put it I'm not trying to copy the photo but I do like um, the effects that um, photos often have with hard and soft edges and um, and just really subtle transition of values and then some in and then textures that are a little bit difficult to rep um, to replicate with paint but with a little bit of patience you can you can kind of um, get it the paint to look very similar to um, in a very painterly way some of what's going on in the photograph but it just it just requires a fair amount of patience and really um, a control over the the values and the thicknesses of the brush strokes so trying to get that just a little bit of hint of pink there um, and then problem is that I need to go lighter on either side of that to get it to read right. Okay. I was trying to reserve a certain amount of darker value underneath her brow just so that it gives a sense that the eyes are set back. And if I go too light above there, then it's not going to read correctly. So I am going to push that darker and then I'm going to come a little bit darker with that pink that I was trying to get. And then I'll um, try to slowly push those values a little bit closer together so that um, they have the right amount of um, subtlety and change in relationship to each other. Okay, good. All right, and then the other eye, sadly, is quite a bit off, so I'm going to do a fair amount of correction on that. And I'm going to go um, back and forth working quickly and then slowing down and working very slowly where I need to um, ensure that I have enough accuracy in the in my brush strokes so we'll keep on working here until it starts to feel like um, the expression that she has in the photograph Just trying to get just a little bit of the darkness from her eyelashes and then there's just this very shallow space between the edge of her face and the eye and uh, so I want to maintain that just get that little bit of uh, line from the from her lower eyelid her lower eyelids a is a little bit puffy and I want to kind of capture some of that which means that it's lighter on the upper edge near the eye and then um, it does um, drop off darker quickly in that in that corner need to here knock down some of those um, transitional paint strokes that are just standing out too much okay hello Melania thank you for joining in and try to remember Melania's in I want to say Alabama if I remember correctly I could be totally off but and 
sometimes uh, Melania um, draws and paints along with me. Um, so can't expect everyone to paint with me every night, but um, but I like to think that there's people drawing and painting with me around the world. And, um, I've been starting to look a little bit at my Instagram demographics, and it's pretty interesting because it's not quite what I expected. Um, my demographics are um, my um, followers on Instagram are 77% um, international, meaning that only 23% um, um, sorry yes, 20 so I remember right, not 23% um, yeah, I guess it's 33% um, sorry, live in the United States. I need to double check that. Um, and 62% of my followers are women. And then 34, um, 34 and under, basically age range of 34 to 13, um, that's 70% that's of my audience. So really my overall audience, the, the vast majority are um, are young, um, young international women. And most of my audience I know from asking my audience questions through posts are artists trying to learn how to paint. So it's kind of interesting that I have such a, a, a large young um, audience, uh, predominantly female, that's in places like Turkey, Australia, New Zealand, um, Saudi Arabia um, and um, various parts of Europe, England, Finland, um, Denmark. So it's, so, you know, I'm just doing this live demo, but it's also interesting that there's so many people tuning in from around the world. It's a little hard for the Europeans to tune in at this time because it's um, the middle of the night for a lot of them. And uh, and so, um, I've con I've done some live demos in the morning just so that um, people in other places have a, a chance to join in. But um, it's um, but I might do more of that in the future. We'll see if I if I develop a larger audience. It might be um, worth doing um, st um, staggered times. Okay, so. Just sort of um, doing a little bit of blending, trying to soften some of these transitions, and then I'll come in with some thicker paint at, um, at different times. Okay, the, her, the forms in her face are just so subtle is what makes it really hard. Get a little bit of orange in that pinks there to get her top of her eyebrow and then I I might need to go fairly cool with the highlights here to get them to pop a little bit get a little bit of blue in the paint but I need to go much lighter like that and I want to make sure that I'm getting that sense of form that you're really feeling the curvature of the forehead, um, etc. Then there's a lot of green in the hair, so I want to make sure I get that. Kind of, she's sort of a light blonde with some um, yellowish green streaks in there. And then the darker areas are are much um, greener than I have. In then what I have painted, there's a lot of, put a lot of pink in there. So I can push that, push the green in there and a little bit of black. Okay, so, and I wanna make sure that I get her forehead really moving back and curving back 
sort of that illusion that it's moving back in space. And that is partially dependent on the values, but also on the drawing itself. Make sure that there's enough accuracy in the drawing to get the, um, that feeling of dimension. A little purple in the hair here. Make sure I get that. And then it goes almost to white. So I can see the challenge here is that I'm flattening out the forms here. And what this really needs to do is, once it hits the corner of this eye, it needs to be fairly convincing that it's, um, that it is turning towards us and then it's moving back um, in space away from us. So it's really um, getting these subtle um, transitions and measurements right that it feels like it is moving back in space. That is a little bit too harsh, so I need to soften that up a bit. And I need to make sure that that, that side of her face is in the right place. So I'm looking like I am having the drawing right, but just because I don't have the, the, um, the movement of the form moving in the right way, it doesn't feel like the drawing, the placement is right. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. Okay. Um, so I have Daniel. He's from here from Massachusetts. And um, and Jason Bourne missed the beginning. When did the stream start? Oh, okay. Well, I started at about 9 o'clock. I already had a little bit of the painting done that I did live on my uh, Instagram channel. Um, for the benefit of some of my Instagram followers. Um, so I had a, a little bit of it um, done already. So if you watch from the beginning of this video, um, you'll see that there's just a bit of paint that's down already. But um, but from um, if you go over to Instagram, then you can that's posted to my um, to my highlights or to my story, I guess you call it. Um, so you can watch that beginning part if you want. If you don't, you don't. You don't want to have missed much because it was just about a, about 20 minutes of, of uh, flailing around. Okay, I need to make her chin a little bit sharper. Getting quite a bit of, um, getting fairly gray with the pinks here. So at some point I may decide to either warm it up or to, um, or to try to clean it up a little bit. So far, so good. It doesn't look horrible yet. And usually I would like to get a fair amount of the face or panel covered so I can start to see the, the values that I'm putting down. It's a little hard to judge until you've taken out a lot of the white from the panel itself. Be careful to maintain the angles of the of the forms in the face. So there's a slight tilt to her head, and then it's slightly turned um, uh, away from us. So not quite a three quarter um, view of her face, but um, but something like a a quarter, <laughs> I guess a quarter turn, however you want to say that. So just slightly turned away from us. Let me work on that jawline a little, because that's still kind of throwing my, the sense of the drawing being right off a little bit. OK, that's a little bit better. Not quite getting the lower lip right either, so that is just going to take some patience. And then 
her upper lip is jutting out towards us and that really can get that sense of that by paying attention to the center line that first um, just comes down a little bit and then moves forward um, towards us and that's just if I follow the center line around the nose and um, over the lip there is this sort of um, moving a left to right or from right to left to gives it the sense that the tip of the nose moves forward and then the bottom of the nose moves back again and then the lip then moves forward again so it's just paying attention to those little changes in the drawing underlying drawing that really um, help make that work okay and and randy is here hi randy Okay, so again, if anyone missed it, this is a, a, a photo that I got, got off of Sketchy. The, the name of the young girl is Callie, um, posted by her mom. And she is on a swing set and looking like she's having a good time, trying to capture some of that, um, the joy in her expression there. It's a little bit of a challenge. I'm using a pretty big brush at this point. I'm thinking that I need to do a little bit of um, correction with a f smaller brush so I'm really getting a little bit more control. Although this brush isn't quite that small. It's just a um, a bristle filbert that I've kind of worn down into a point and so it works in a way as a detailed brush. a little bit better and then her eye lid it's just a little bit wider as it moves around okay and then I'm going to carefully move her pupil over just a bit it's just pupil I mean the iris and the pupil She has the iris color is a fairly light blue. And I have to make sure that get it a little bit lighter on the bottom so it has a sense that the light is passing through it. It's a little trick. But if you pay attention to the way things really look, and I did go too light there. Um, that you'll notice if the light source is from above, then the iris will be lighter on the bottom because the light is passing through and illuminating the back side of your, of your iris. And so if the light's from above, that lighter area will be below. If the light is from below, the lighter area will be above. just kind of poking around a little bit until it starts to feel right. Okay, getting a little bit too light too fast there, so I'm just going to rub it back a little bit. And then this does come up a little bit faster too. You can see if I can get that orangey red color that's around the side of the eye. then just um, knock back the transition between that darker and lighter area so it looks like it's part of the same form. Okay, we'll keep on moving here. Great. And let's see if I can fix her teeth a little bit. just kind of drawing in a little bit here. I can go back and correct it later. She's got a little bit, at least in my painting, she's got a little bit of a Pippi Long style, Pippi Long stocking smile going on. I 
think I've exaggerated the space in her teeth a little bit too much, but um, can work on that a little bit too. Okay, and then this side of the mouth has to um, come up a little bit to give it the right expression, and that's pushing back on her cheek right here, and so there's this tension between the smile and the cheek, right? right about that spot. And similarly on the other side, not surprising, usually you have to watch for the symmetry, the symmetric forms in a painting from one side to the other. It's really easy just to paint form by form without paying attention that there's forms on the other side of the face that are doing exactly the same thing. So you just gotta make sure all those things align before they start to look right. Okay, back to a little bit larger brush. Kind of get these um, value changes in the tip of the nose. So we have a white white that comes down through there. And I'm gonna repaint that in a minute. And then you have these reddish tones that kind of stripe the tip of the nose. So you have a red coming across. And then you have a darker color, purplish, running to the side of that. <clears throat> and again, I'm going a little bit too much change in those um, transitions, I do have to be a little bit subtler. Okay, that's that's a little bit better. And then I have to, the base of the nose, I have to make sure that it is dropping back a little bit faster than I have it. See if I can get the reddish nostril in that's right here. It comes forward just a little bit more. Okay, that's not so bad. Needs a little bit of work, but I can um, do a little bit more sculpting on it to get it closer. So still trying to keep this fairly general. Um, even though I may stop at some point to put in a little bit of detail, I'm still trying to um, be aware of the overall form. Okay, still the eyes are bothering me a little bit, so let's see if I can move them around a little bit until they feel like they're in the right spot. Let's look, the iris is starts right there. It's actually right on. Clean up the corner of the eye a little bit. That's better. There's the top of the cheek here. I'm gonna restate that. So it feels like it starts to move around a little bit. state the highlight on the nose. So this is where I think the drawing is off. I see this very small distance here between the, the lower eyelid and then the wing of the nose really is up here somehow. So either my eye is off or the nose is off. So could help to have a little bit more measuring 
this is the lower fold of the eye. And I don't know if you can see that. It should be right here. Right there. So that means that I really have to bring the this eye down quite a bit. I'm just going to wipe it out. It's so much easier than trying to um, trying to paint over it. And that already looks a lot better, I can tell you. And it's just slightly um, indicated. So I don't know if you can see that, but um, it starts to feel right. And it may mean that I have that eyebrow in the wrong place too, so I have to look to adjust that. Don't be afraid to um, to repaint something if it's not in the right place. That holding on to things that aren't properly um, painted, aren't properly located, can really um, make a painting suffer um, because it will just never feel quite right and you'll never be able to to um, get a sense that it is if it's um, completely in the wrong place. Okay, and just cut, change the direction of the nose a little bit. Okay, that's starting to feel a bit better. And I want to pull, still pull these cheeks forward a bit more. So they do kind of come out quite a bit. Carve a little bit more into this cheek. And there's a little bit of red here in the bottom of the cheek. That's not red. Okay, that's better. And then there's a touch of bluish purple here along the very edge. Great. That's starting. I'm starting to feel the form, even if it's not doing exactly what it um, needs to be doing in the end. At least I can start to see the dimensionality in the face, which means when I go to put down a color, in my mind's eye, I can see that I'm putting the color down on a plane in the face that's pointing in a particular direction. And uh, there's a lot of power in that. Okay, okay I gotta give her a little more teeth. There. Slightly there. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but I did um, kind of a poll in one of my posts on Instagram asking people if they were afraid of oil paint. And that um, I was just kind of curious and that I was also thinking about doing um, sort of like an oil painting beginner's course, just the idea that it would get people past the their fear of oils so that they felt like they could paint more freely or try it um, if they're um, reluctant to do so, that I would give a little bit of instruction, guidance um, to help people do that. And I got a really big response um, from that. And, um, and then, so now I kind of think I have to follow through and put together a, a, a beginner's oil painting course. Okay, so um, Jennifer says, Hi, AJ, amateur question. Um, what's the appeal of sorting out placement as you paint rather than starting off with a more complete sketch? Um, so good question, and I do answer this sort of in some of my videos, partially that I don't really have the patience to do a very... Um, finalized drawing before I paint and I find that I can go right in um, with paint and draw and um, but it does require that you kind of correct and move things around as you go and do that 
Um, and it also uh, gives you a chance to um, play with some of the wet and wet on wet um, or ala prima painting techniques, which um, create sort of a more of a dynamics with the brushwork where um, and where edges get harder and softer and one brush um, stroke pushes into the other um, that creates a lot of visual interest and that's something that you don't get if you work very tightly you don't get that kind of sense of of um, brushwork movement and I, I really do um, like the look of it I really like artists like John Singer Sargent and um, Joaquin Soroya and um, and Anders Zorn, William Merritt Chase, who all painted in this style. And um, and they very rarely um, work from a, um, a refined sketch of the, of the model. In, the, in their cases, they're not working from photographs because um, photographs were, um, were used less um, frequently in, in um, the act of painting, although in that time frame, which was the um, turn of the um, 19th into the 20th century, um, some artists were starting to use photographs as a reference tool um, when they painted. Um, some examples are, um, are Gustave uh, Cayabot, Cayabo and uh, or Cayabate, however you pronounce it. And uh, Maxfield Parrish is another example of someone who worked a lot from photographs, um, who is an American illustrator. And uh, he was probably one of the richest um, painters at that time because he would sell his images as um, in sets or part of a calendar, and they um, were extremely popular. And he would sell uh, millions of these um, calendars. So, but anyway, he Maxwell Parrish worked a lot from um, from photography. Um, so, and Randy says, um, "Wow, good catch! Really made a difference. The smallest change um, makes such a big um, such a big change." Yeah. So, I assume you're talking about moving how I move the eye um, a little bit more. So I have one habit that I have is I will see very subtle changes in the photograph. And then when I paint them, I'll paint them as much um, more extreme changes. And that, um, and then it will lose some of the, the sense of uh, solidity to the painting because it will just be overall too contrasty and everything coming forward, nothing sitting back. And so I have to get better at painting more subtly. OK, so I'm really going in for the, see if I can get the sense of form of this eye with the sort of John Singer Sargent technique, which is to just paint little clues of um, paint, which really tell a much bigger story. One of John Singer Sargent's big things was say it um, with as few breaststrokes as possible, um, which is nice in theory. It's really hard in practice. Um, but he was a master at that. Just need to move the, um, the opening of that eye up a little bit and move up the, the pupil itself. That's a little bit better. And then I have reddish dark color, purpley even, as the lower edge of that eyelid coming down. There we go. OK. And so if I place that shadow right with the lights that are on top of the eyelid going down into a corner, then you really do get the sense of um, the anatomy there with just very few strokes. Just kind of keep on working that idea on the other side, the far side of the eyelid. It goes a little bit redder here, 
and then I can't forget my shadow that's the crease really of that eyelid. Okay, starting to get there a little bit where we're starting to see the forms that are around the eye. I just need that little dark trap of light that's in the corner of the eye, the outside corner, which is right about there. Okay, getting very close there, just adjusting a few little things should really um, get it. Maybe using too big a brush there, but it is starting to pull together. And just modify the opening of the eye just a little bit. There. It's a little warm here tonight. I don't know how the weather is anywhere else. Okay, I see. Um, Jennifer, okay, yes, awesome. Um, thank you, yeah. So I, d I did do a video earlier in the year that talked about um, how I start paintings. And it, and it kind of gets into a little bit about how I have, I don't know if it's really ADHD, but it's kind of that feeling, that anxious feeling when you're starting a painting that you don't really feel like you have the patience for the drawing part of it. You just want to get right in there and start to see it. And, and that's where I realized, hey, you know what? It is okay not to do so much drawing and do a lot more drawing with the paint itself. Okay, this is a little fun where I'm getting a little thick with the paint in the highlight here and it really does um, the texture really helps bring um, the form forward and I really like the, the look of that and uh, see if I can maintain that throughout the to the finish to really keep that um, that fairly thick um, paint in there and then there's a little bit of bright pink I think I can get that with my crinacridone red um, on the far side of the nose. Let's see, the crinacridone red has this very high tending strength that allows me to keep, even though I'm going very light, there's still some evidence of a little bit of um, chroma in the paint. And then the far side of the nose really does start to go gray see if I can mimic what the shadow is doing there with this one paint stroke. Yep, starting to feel that. There's this little bit of an orange color on the underside of the nose there. And that's going to help turn the form as I, as I um, paint those changes of color. Let's keep that wider there. And then right in our tip of our nose, there's quite a bit of pink that comes down and meets the shadow, which is fairly low on the on the nose there. So I really have to keep it pretty light right here on the tip. Oops, a little globby. That's not quite light enough. So I can just come in with pure white at this point because there's enough paint down on the surface to support it. And I'm just trying to push that color just a little bit um, lighter. So sometimes you can come down with some fairly pure white or color. Um, even though you don't want it to be um, pure, it's mixing with the colors that are down already. To, um, so you're just adjusting with that pure color. Making some happy little strokes. There's no accidents. Just, uh, you know, no, one, no one's here to say it's wrong or right. You just put it down, have fun. Just 
just practicing about my Bob Ross. Okay. And very close with the tip of the nose. I just have a little bit of a darker shape that's happening there, grayish um, or purple, right in the bottom right here. It's a little bit too dark. And then something still a little bit off. It looks like I don't have my lips at quite a, um, enough at an angle. So this upper lip is pulling out a little bit up here and then comes up. And then I have that little bit of a purplish gray again coming in right there. Okay, didn't really, don't really see it there. Okay, there. So that's looking about right. I also have the upper lip a little bit higher on this side too. And her upper lip is just curling just a little bit and just has that little bit of change in color where it goes kind of bright pink, very light at the very um, top edge of it and that gives it a sense that it's um, that's curling just slightly. Okay, that's starting to to look better. Okay, and then I'm going to redraw the jaw a little bit, still not feeling quite right. So coming up. Then we have this um, fairly forceful shadow that's right here on the jawline. See if I can modify that a little bit. So as I'm getting closer to the values that are there in the photograph, this starts to have kind of a photographic feel where you start to see the forms moving around. Now, I could have approached this much differently. I could have defined each form with the drawing and then gone in and modeled each form separately. And there's a lot of artists that work that way. Um, if I can think of a few offhand. Um, I think... Um, Daria Kali, is that her, the right name? She works very much that way, works from shape to shape and um, works out the rendering. Also, um, wow, I'm really losing my names tonight. Um, uh, Steven, it'll come to me, I'm sure. Okay, and I'm going to refine a little bit the the edge of the nose there is coming up just a little bit higher, slightly. So I have to be careful not to overdo that. And then the the wing of her nostril is a little bit flatter than I than what I have here. So I'm gonna, just going to come out a little bit further. There. Okay. And then she has a little bit of light underneath the nostril there. And then the shadow of the nose comes just right underneath that get that in there. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a little bit of light there. Then shadow. That shadow is a little bit redder than what I have. And it comes off the, from underneath the tip of the nose and then forward. Okay, and some very light purple here. Okay, and again, come in with almost pure white to mix it in with the paint that's already there. Okay. So Jennifer says, 
I don't feel brave enough to draw directly with the paint. And this is one of the reasons why I'm going to have this beginner um, painting class so that um, so that people can just get a little bit more comfortable uh, moving the paint around on on their canvas or their panel. And you do that by um, getting gaining that comfort by really um, limiting the number of variables that you that you have. So start off and start off with just a monochromatic painting where you just start um, pushing values and color back and forth. I mean value paintbrush the values back and forth until it starts to look the way you want. And because you've um, you've simplified it quite a bit, um, it takes a lot of the fear out of um, making changes because you're not having to change so many things. Um, so um, it might be a couple months before I have that um, that course and the tutorials that are would be part of that course together. But I do want to keep it as a free course. Um, the hard part about a free course is that um, when you have a paid course, then you have people that are committed um, to following the directions in the course and the and um, the required aspects of it. When it's free, then then people feel like, oh, well, they can take it or leave it. They don't have any skin in the game. So I need to come up with a way to at least get people to feel committed to the following the process just um, just for the benefit of really learning what it is that um, that I'm trying to get across and then after the course is over they can do whatever the heck they want but but at least um, um, there is some level of commitment to trying um, what the course has to offer Anyway, so I haven't quite figured all that out yet, so I'm still working on it. Um, like I said, I don't really want to make it a paid course. I want to make it available to as many of my followers as possible. And, uh, and it's based off um, basically a lesson that I had when I went to art school. It was with a painter named Dan McCaw, who um, is still out there. He has an Instagram channel and is... Uh, is a great American, um, I want to say that he's an impressionist, but his style has really moved much more abstract in recent years. And so he's almost more of a post-impressionist in a way, a modern post-impressionist, um, but it does really beautiful work. But anyway, getting back to the lesson, he had us mix um, black and phthalo blue together to create kind of a, a, a very, cool dark um, tint um, not really a tint more of a shade a dark shade and then we just used white and so with this dark mixture in the white we could you could paint a monochromatic painting um, we did a um, painted from a model and did a head study and um, mine came out really nice but what I also enjoyed was the freedom of not having to worry about color mixing. It was just more about finding the values and describing the forms of the model as I went. Let's um, do a little more adjustment to the base of the nose here. Just carving it a little bit more. And then I'm pulling the nostril back a little bit further. I think it's going to help here. There, okay. And I'm doing, I'm, I'm almost like chiseling away kind of with this brush, trying to get at um, the, the, um, the facets or the planes of the form. And now I can sort of start to see like where the differences are between the painting and the drawing so that I can make some subtle adjustments as I go. Um, right, even like the bridge of this nose is a little bit um, 
the turn is a little bit more subtle and then the cheek comes up much closer higher up here so just by making these subtle subtle changes um, then things start to um, feel a lot more solid and convincing <clears throat> okay so um, so anyway he um, Dan McCaw had us make these mixtures on the palette and then so we had these big two big piles of paint and there was a lot of paint down so that you didn't feel worried about um, you didn't paint with too little paint I think it's a, a mistake that a lot of painters make is they get not enough paint on the painting and on their palette to really um, to really manipulate the paint that's that that gets um, put down and so once you have enough paint down then you can really start to um, play with it kind of like clay um, and push the values around almost like you're sculpting and uh, let me get some blue on my brush to paint in just the iris a little bit okay so here is where I get into and maybe a little bit further in the painting kind of get um, look back and forth and kind of get fairly exact with the the placement and the colors to get kind of uh, again sort of photographic effect that I want so to very subtly adjust things okay. a little bit of more red here I really can't tell what color that is. It's so subtle. So if in doubt, I guess I can use a little bit of gray in there. Okay. Okay, so I am starting to see the forms pop out a little bit as I go. And I said I really wanted texture in the whites there, so I have to keep on, every time I work on it, I have to come back with fairly thick paint and to really get um, that highlights to pop. Okay, starting to feel it slowly, getting there. I'm going to restate that um, that space in her nose, which is right about there. Did I just say nose? Space in her teeth. Space in her nose. Where, where, where am I? <laughs> okay, just get a little bit of white there. And then because her lip is cool. Um, curled a little bit her upper lip there's going to be this darker just um, almost like a little shadow or line on the lower edge of her lips and a little bit on the gums okay that's starting starting slowly to look better So I'm using some fairly dull colors so far. If I really need to get a strong color, I would have to uh, mix up some fairly clean paint to get that. And, uh, but not, not really needing um, such high intensity yet. So we're about an hour in, that's right. Um, so I think we got about another hour that I'll paint tonight and see how far I can get along on the face. Let's, uh, 
so I know that angle is not right here. Definitely is coming up a little bit um, steeper. Just trying to get the right um, color in there. So I almost got some of this, um, something like a alizarin crimson. And then get a whitish yellow for the hair that's coming in front. No, that's too dark. <laughs> and so let's trim our hair a little bit. Okay, that's better, a bit better. And get some of these shadowy patches of her hair. And a hair is a great place to get um, very expressive with the brushwork. It's um, that kind of thing, like in the face, it's really easy to get, um, kind of choke up on the, the paintbrush a little bit and be a little bit too tentative to get that sort of sense of free brush work. And that, and that really just takes years of practice and like what Jennifer says about um, being a little bit afraid, um, not being feeling brave, but really um, doing enough painting that you start to feel more and more confident and that allows you to move the paint around in the facial features. Um, but in the hair, um, it doesn't feel quite as risky because um, it's just, um, if you have a strand of hair that's out of place, it doesn't really feel wrong. No one's gonna, you know, comparing it to the photo and saying, oh no, you look, you know, you painted this, this strand of hair wrong. There, it's just um, an aesthetic that looseness that you can bring to the painting really does um, create some aesthetic interest and makes the painting feel more dynamic. Okay. So I do want to go lighter with the background. I don't want it to be so dark gray. So I am going to work to lighten that up a little bit. Just a little bit of blues in there too, blues and greens. Oh, too green. Yeah, doesn't hurt having a little bit of um, coloration back there behind her. Let's just um, trim a little bit more into her hair. Okay, so some of this is starting to work. I think I have to go push things, some things a little bit further. Great. All right. Um, so Randy asks, um, lovely AJ, um, have you always impostoed the whites or just more recently? I, I think kind of both. I think I always used to do it a little bit, but I think that I've um, gained more appreciation to if I am going to go thicker with the paint, it's either going to be in the background or in the, the highlights or both. And um, and so I've um, been doing it more sort of with the highlights. It does when you're able to hit a highlight with just a little bit of a thicker paint that just sits right on top of all the others. It just feels so much more convincing as a highlight than if it were just um, just a flat um, area of color that had no dimension to it. And so from that regard, I really like, um, like doing it where I can um, using that. It's, I don't know, it's kind of a trick, but it works, so I, I, I use it. <laughs> Um, I 
mean, I think overall, like painting good portraiture is really challenging. So if you have a few good tricks that really kind of help you along the way, then you know, I think more power to you. Okay, trying to get this hair that's in the, in the back of her it has kind of a reddish coloration to it. And I came out a little bit too green to begin with. And I've made her shoulders much more hunched than they should be, so I really do have to fix that. So, and that's because I don't have this um, this light here. That's um, I made kind of the where the hair is more like the contour of her shoulder, and it's not really that's not really reading right. So I go ahead and carve a little bit so that you can start to feel the, the top and the side of that shoulder. Okay. Good. Need a little water break here, so you have to excuse me. Um, the other week I broke my keyboard because it was a really hot and humid day here. And in fact, our air conditioning was broken and I was doing this painting demo. And every time I picked up the water to take a drink, droplets of, of the condensation were dropping on top of my keyboard. And then it um, eventually took out a few of my keys. So I had to go and, um, and buy a new keyboard. <laughs> um, you just never know. Uh, okay, I've given her way too much forehead here. So let's see if I can adjust that. You know, it's just not only just looking and, and seeing where things are different, but um, but feeling, like looking at it and getting a sense of, you know, what is, what is the expression or what does that feel like? And is that the right, does that match what's in the, the painting? And uh, so if it doesn't, then you gotta figure out, well, how am I gonna change it to make it look right? And so that's that's the challenge there, like learning how to correct something so that it's closer to what you want it to be. Um, I still don't think I'm quite there where I can do that very f um, efficiently. I have to kind of guess and then take it back. Okay, I think I just moved the nose too high again, so I'm gonna try to push down some of those features including, I think the nostrils in the right place, the bottom of the nose was um, not, um, not turning quite right. So I have a little bit of the um, far nostril that's showing here, barely. So that's, I made that a little bit too strong. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm gonna lower this nostril just a tiny bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. And I'm gonna correct the angle of that nostril too. Okay, again, looks looking a little bit too high. Just working back and forth, trying different things. I think that's a lot closer than it was before. Okay, so, so far so good in terms of the technical difficulty. 
don't have the sound dropping out yet. I don't have the picture freezing. I'm kind of making sure I'm I'm vigilant and looking at the screen here on my monitor to make sure that that um, I can see myself painting. If the sound goes out, really someone's going to have to tell me because I wouldn't know. Okay, so I have a um, what I call a skewing problem, which is that I tend to um, shift the tops to the left and the bottoms to the right. And so then overall the drawing starts to um, fall apart a little bit because I've twisted everything a little bit. So it takes a lot of um, being careful and looking at the painting in a mirror or using other similar devices like turning it upside down as a way of seeing some of that skewing because our brain kind of wants to see the world kind of a little bit differently than it actually is and and when you paint then you time you kind of exaggerate what the brain wants to see know if that makes any sense but um, that's the way I think about it <sighs> excuse me wow that was a powerful yawn um, okay gonna try to get in a little bit uh, more gray color gray is the kind of the forgotten color I think um, when we paint, we tend to look for the brighter colors, and sometimes we don't even notice patches of gray that support those colors. So sometimes you can't quite replicate what's in the photo because, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, because you don't have enough gray. And so, the, and it's really hard to see gray when you're when it's surrounded by lots of color you don't really notice it okay that's good okay so I'm gonna keep on going I am feeling a little bit tired so I'm not sure that I'm gonna go a few uh, a full two hours here tonight um, but I do like the way the painting is coming along so I do want to finish it at some point um, so I will um, probably work on it a little bit more even after the paint is set up and dried and so um, but that doesn't really tend to stop me I just cover over the whole painting with a new layer of paint pretty much and just keep on working like that. Okay. Keep on going with the um, comparing. Um, so, yes, I'm trying to straighten out my skew problem a little bit just by subtly moving things over that I know that are are wrong. Like this little angle of tri triangular point there comes off of, excuse me, the corner of the eye. I can tell you that's in the wrong place because I've, I've moved it over too far to one side and that's part of my skewing everything gets shifted over a little bit you don't notice it until you hold it up into a mirror or something like that <laughs> we have these dark spots that help the eye wrap around the head because they kind of curve if you look at it they kind of curve around like that so that's a real good tool to help the eye move around. 
Okay, I need a little bit of a thicker brush now because I'm going to come in with much um, uh, thicker areas of color in certain spots. Forehead, much pinker. There's this spot in the part of the hair that's kind of purplish. There's a lot of purple here too in the highlights of the hair. And this is where squinting, I may have said this before, but squinting really comes in handy in reducing um, textures and some brighter colors and helps you see exactly what's going on. So I'm a big advocate of squinting. Okay. So I am going to end this at 1030 tonight um, just because at some point I won't be making good progress. I'll just be too tired and then I won't, um, won't be improving the painting and you won't be learning anything either. So this I just can knock down things and make softer edges and that just, um, that's what I love about oil paint just that ability to kind of dig in and try to make things work. Really mix things around, which you really can't do that well with either oils or acrylics. Maybe a little bit with gouache, but I'm not so sure about that one. I've not done figurative painting with um, gouache, only just color and value studies when I was in school. Okay, so I know that I skew, so that means that this jawline has to move over just a little bit to, to work. I'm not really um, getting the chin in the right place. Let's see, have this. And light again or pinkish. Better. Okay, and I need a subtler transition right here. And I need that real clean shadow that's underneath her chin. That's a purple, black. Alizarin permanent together. Okay. So let's measure that eye again. It's in the right place. The nose, the angle of the nose may be off a little. I think partly why I want to end a little early tonight is I'm just um, sweating to death. It's very warm here. save these large piles of paint when you quit? That's a good question. Sometimes I, um, it looks like I have a lot of paint on the palette, but actually I've thinned it out so much that um, when I push it all together, it's not a lot of paint. Um, it's the, the, whatchamacallit, yes, the, the paint right out of the tubes, those piles. Um, 
will dry up in a day or two. And so what I do, and I have to um, fix my setup a little bit, but I put a piece of um, Lucite, sit it over the top of my pellet box so it um, traps the air in, and I'll put some um, clove oil that I've gotten online on Amazon and um, got quite a fairly large bottle of it for how much I need. And I put droplets of the clove oil in um, caps or lids that I have right on my palette. Here's one right here. And that, um, and if I, I haven't been good about putting new drops in, but um, clove vapor comes off uh, out of those caps and, um, and then covers like a very light film on the paint. It's, um, the globs of paint itself and then that retards drawing so those globs of paint will stay wet for like a week or two even without really getting a skin on them which is really nice to be able to keep the um, paint wet like that i um, have a crack in my loose side so it hasn't been as effective as it was before so i need to go out and buy a new piece that piece of loose side i just got off of a cheap picture frame just happened to be just the right um, size and shape. So hopefully that answers your question. I know some people um, throw out the paints, other people put them in the freezer and that helps slow down the, the drying time. They have a little um, kind of like a little box that they put the paint on in the palette and then they can pick up that whole box and then put it in the freezer. So not the whole palette itself, but just something like a like a rain gutter kind of thing that's metal that the paint sits on top of. Hopefully that answered your question. Wasn't sure. Um, I do sometimes when I come start a painting, I'll mix up some of the older colors on the palette and just try to create a neutral um, kind of drawing color. <clears throat> Trying to crack the edge of that hair a little bit. And then I want a little bit of red and black to match the hair here. see what the rest of this looks like okay so I have the blue stripe here I think it's something like okay so I'm gonna um, go for about five more minutes I just want to say a few things that um, those who aren't already subscribed to my YouTube channel um, please subscribe. You'll um, especially hit the notification icon when you subscribe, and that will make sure that you get um, any announcements that I, um, sorry, not announcements, I, anytime that I um, post a new video or start a live video, you get a notification that that's happened. You can also join my mailing list, which is on my website, ajalper.com. If you go to mailing list and, yeah, and you can fill out the form. It just takes a minute to do and then um, you also will get emails from me announcing um, any events or um, demos and when I say any events, any demos that I put on. Um, same thing or just any highlights if I'm um, starting a new course or something like that you will be notified about that. Okay, yep, that's um, looking pretty good. So, yes, I encourage you to either join my mailing list or subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And um, I will be creating these new courses, I think, in the near future. And um, if 
if you're on my mailing list, you um, will get to hear about it. Plus, as part of a requirement for the course, I really do need people to sign into my mailing list so that I can um, easily disseminate the, the information for the course out to um, the people that are that want to learn. Okay, so I'm just going to spend a minute, and I think this is going to be a minute worthwhile, and I'm going to knock down any part of um, forms or strokes in her face that are um, that are standing out too much or not in the right place. And by doing so, I can really start to to hone in and make the the form a lot more convincing. Okay, gonna really get this. Okay, I don't think I have the corners of her mouth quite far enough because um, I don't know. It doesn't feel like she's uh, making quite a broad a smile as she as she is. Okay, so I think that's about it for tonight. I am feeling a little bit tired; hadn't gotten enough sleep in the last few days, so. Um, Thank you all for tuning in. I um, will be working on this um, painting some more um, throughout the week or so, and hopefully we'll have something ready to post to Instagram. Thank you all for joining me. It's um, I really enjoy doing this once a week and glad that people are able to um, come in and watch. You know, if you think other people would enjoy this too, let them know. and. Um, I'm going to be doing this um, every Tuesday night into the future um, as far as long as I, I can and, and people are coming, um, joining in to watch. So thank you very much and have a good night.